Hey guys, Jason Fabok here. I thought it would be cool to do a little video uh, showing off the toys and the collectibles and the comics and all this neat stuff that I have here in my office and to do a little bit of a commentary, uh, tell some stories uh, why they're important to me. And so uh, I hope you'll join me and uh, enjoy. So we're entering into my office here. In the middle is my desk. So this is where I do all my work. Uh, I use a Wacom Cintiq 24. Uh, this uh, Cintiq is about, I don't know, six or seven years old. I got it when I first signed on to DC. As part of my deal, I asked uh, for the money so that I could buy a Cintiq. And uh, it's been good for uh, to me for a lot of years. I've drawn a lot of my books on this. Um, on this machine here and I just actually ordered a brand new one the 32 inch so I'm excited for that to come in uh, my desk here I got some cool stuff I usually have some collectibles and stuff kind of sitting around me um, just to give me some inspiration I have my hot toys stormtrooper here really cool sand trooper I uh, just recently got these uh, transformers figures my son has become uh, he's, he's really into Transformers and it's kind of gotten me back into it too. So picked up these two, looking to get some more. I got these Blitzway Ghostbuster 1 6th figures. Uh, Ghostbusters is one of my favorite, uh, favorite movies. I loved it as a kid. Between that, Star Wars and Back to the Future, that was my, a lot of my childhood and a lot of the things that I really loved. So, uh, I couldn't pass up these figures, um really cool and they've been I kind of built like this little custom riser so that while I'm sitting I can still see some cool stuff displayed up here so you know sometimes I'll have uh, these figures I'll grab other ones out of my shelf or if I get something new I'll kind of put it around my desk and it just it gives me some inspiration and um, I wanted to show off these so this is a 3d printed uh, resin printed uh, Batman head made by Tony May and he sent this to me he used some of my artwork as a reference for it and uh, this is an excellent reference tool for drawing Batman's head and I'll you know I'll use it quite a bit and uh, sometimes I'll even light it so I can get the shadows looking right so if you need like a tough angle like you know Batman looking from the back like that or from the kind of side those are very tough angles to get working um, I'll use this you know so that you can figure that out or even a side view uh, it's a cool little thing that he sent me and uh, this is the Hot Toys Christian Bale head uh, for the Dark Knight Rises figure and again I'll use this too um, as my, just some facial reference uh, to get shadows and uh, angles tough tough to read angles you know use uh, a tip for artists just use stuff like this like if you can find some really nice reference material uh, 3d models you can even model this stuff yourself out of clay it's a good exercise to do but uh, um, this stuff can go a long way to helping you uh, get your form and and get some really good reference for character when you're drawing right here here's all the books that I usually keep beside me these were these are kind of my essentials for doing doing work every day uh, a lot of Gary Frank stuff, um, Killing Joke, like you can see how much I've used this because it's like even starting to yellow. Um, but uh, this book, I love this book. This is an, just such a beautiful book on, you know, just to see like a master inker at work and penciler at work in Brian Boland and the way that he tells the stories. You're going to see a lot of this kind of stuff in... Uh, in Batman three jokers coming up so I use a lot of that Batman hush is great for, for drawing Batman um, <clears throat> this book uh, right here ultimatum you can see how beat up this this copy is this is actually my second copy but uh, Dave Finch's work in this book is excellent I think this might be his best the best stuff he's ever drawn and uh, this book here is great reference for buildings and for cities. Like there's just some really great 
city shots and, and how to set up lighting and uh, destruction and like, like look at that, like that's just so, that's just so good. So uh, I use a lot of this book for reference with cities and buildings and characters, like look at the muscles on that arm, it's great. So I use a lot of that book too. And uh, these are all the ones that I kind of go back and forth between when I'm looking for reference or looking for, you know, um, inspiration on how to how to approach a scene or how to draw a sequence or something like that. I'll I'll flip through those books. So yeah, this is my drawing station. I got my three jokers, uh, shameless uh, <laughs> shameless little uh, you know promotion there of the book. So let's start on this side of the room and we'll go through uh, all the stuff I have on this side and kind of around around the office. So up here, I have my Lego Ghostbusters house. I just moved this in here actually yesterday. I did a clean of my office, took me all day, cleaned out stuff, got rid of a lot of things, put them all in boxes, but uh, I moved this in here because I, I really just wanted to check it out. My kids were playing with it and they were destroying it. So I brought it in here and uh, this is a really cool set, you know, all the little, all the stuff that's going on in there, you know, very fun. Um, <clears throat> Batman Incorporated, this was the first Batman I drew for DC uh, with uh, David Finch's uh, Dark Knight series. And so I bought this figure I bought this figure years ago when it came out, uh, Dave had designed these and I was going to open up this figure and then my wife ended up just saying something like, oh, you shouldn't open it up. You should always keep it in the box. And then I, I got too, too scared. I tried to find a second one and I couldn't. And so it's always just stayed in the box. It's a cool figure. One day I'll find a, another one so I can actually have it on display because this is a, it's a sweet figure. Like that's a great figure even to get for uh, anatomy and that sort of thing because it just, it looks spot on. <clears throat> then we have these shelves here. These are my uh, Detolf shelves. And, uh, you know, there's lots of cool stuff in there. I haven't haven't put anything in that bottom shelf. But what I did was I, I put these, like, cool LED lights. Um, let me see if I can... I got these really cool LED lights. And uh, the wire's really unsightly, so I got some uh, black foam board and I cut it out to size and so all the wires and stuff are behind there you can't actually see it now um, and it kind of makes it look like little shadow boxes it's really cool so uh, so yeah we start here with Killing Joke and Arkham Asylum Joker with my first printing of uh, Batman Killing Joke love that book Wonder Woman and Superman here uh, Hot Toys, Marty McFly, Back to the Future Part 2. I love the shoes. Darth Vader. I have my Mike Mignola Batman. I'm, gonna, I'm kind of shuffling things around right now, and so I haven't figured out what I'm going to put there just yet. This is one of my favorite Lego sets of all time. The Fishing Village. Uh, I don't know why, it just reminds me of growing up in Colchester, Ontario, and uh, even though it didn't look anything like this, but I just love the, just the, the mood and the vibe it gives off, and I put that little, that little tugboat thing next to there. Um, here's a Darth Vader helmet I got during my first trip to Disney World when I was a kid, uh, after the Star Wars ride at, um, used to be MGM Studios, there's a little, there's a, a shop there. And uh, we bought that, my dad bought that for me and I've kept it ever since, I love it, it's cool, cool helmet. Then we got these bookshelves on this side, so I'll kind of pull back. So I got all these these bookshelves and I, I built it so that I could have books on display and my figures and this spot here. Originally, I was gonna put a big screen TV in there so that I could like watch movies while I work, but then uh, I ended up just using my Cintiq to watch movies. I'll just put them on the side of the screen while I'm working. So 
um, this has just kind of become a spot <clears throat> with my record player. Sometimes I'll jam, put some music on, crank it up. I got this, uh, we'll start here with this statue. So this is the Prime One Studios Arkham statue. And uh, Jeff John sent me this statue when we first started on Three Jokers. So this was like two years ago. And he just said, hey, check out this statue. Um, you know, it's it'll be good for inspiration. And so, yeah, it's it's huge. And uh, there's some, I got to do some work with Prime One. Uh, hopefully you'll be seeing that stuff very soon. Um, but uh, we've, we've come up with some really cool designs. So I have to find a place where I'm going to be able to display all those figures, the statues, because they're just massive, just massive. And uh, here is a signed print from Tim Sale, one of my favorite artists. Love him. And uh, over here we got... Uh, Swamp Thing Winter Special. Very proud of that book. We'll maybe talk about that another time. I'm thinking about doing a, like a, a commentary on the book. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll do that sometime soon, hopefully. And then this Michael Keaton Batman uh, figure here. So now we come to this bookshelf, and uh, we'll start up here. So I got Dark Side War. Dark Side, Grail, Wonder Woman, all based off of the artwork from Dark Side War and uh, Amazovirus. Got some Watchmen, all my Watchmen collection that I've collected. Most of these books are from the comps that DC sends me, and I've probably given away more books than I've actually even collected. These are just the ones that I've sorted through and grabbed. And uh, even now, there's just too many books. I'm going to probably get rid of most of these coming up. Maybe do a bookyard sale one day. But uh, um, So then down here is the Justice League. These figures here are some of my favorite ones that were done by DC Collectibles. I really think they just captured the look and the feel of Jim Lee's artwork. All, the, all of the models are very powerful looking. Especially this Batman. I think this is one of my favorite Batman figures. It's just, it's awesome. And uh, I kind of, a little bit of inside baseball, I kind of wish that uh, DC collectibles and action figure companies would focus more on figures like this. I, I don't, I'm not really big into super articulated figures. I just want ones that uh, just look cool standing on a shelf and represent the character in 3D as best as possible. Like that Green Lantern's really nice it's a great great reference piece as well but down here these are the um, Ninja Turtle movie figures from NECA these are some of the best uh, best 7 inch 6 inch action figures they ever made like they just they look exactly like the characters from the movie uh, in miniature form like look at that shredder it's just awesome so good Leonardo was always was my favorite Ninja Turtle. And I got the and it's even got a came with a cool backdrop, splinter, really nice figures. I kind of worked out a little display here so that my son could it's at his height so he can come down and he can take a look. And then down here I have uh, the NECA cartoon series uh, Turtles. This was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive set. A buddy of mine, Dan, was able to pick these up for me and ship them to me. Forever, forever grateful for them because uh, this is a great set. Look at that, Leonardo. Michelangelo has that really cool, like that, the effect of looking like a spinning, uh, spinning nunchuck. And then they recently just released the Bebop and the Rocksteady. So I got those in there, Krang, and that cool little uh, pod thing with the gun retro mutagen ray or whatever it's called look at that oh such good figures and then i got some signed books in the back by kevin eastman so yeah just just something to kind of display it with um and then down here is just a jumble of books that don't fit anywhere else because they're too big i've got this awesome bernie wrights in um artifact edition of all the swamp thing stuff and this x-men book here I remember getting this book when I was in grade three and uh, it's just a guide to, oh, here's my cat, Millie, coming to say hi. 
uh, it's just a guide to all the X-Men. And this is what like opened me up to the X-Men. Uh, I got it from the book fair, if you guys ever had book fairs. And uh, everything's in black and white. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of Jim Lee artwork in here. Some Rob Liefeld. Look at that. Ugh. That that picture there made me fall in love with Wolverine. But I would read through this, not really knowing what the heck any of the history was, but uh, tried to tried to figure it out. You might be thinking like, what's with this Bob Ross drink? My wife got this for me to try and help me get through <laughs> three Jokers, and so I think. I think I'm going to drink it when I hand in the final last uh, little bit of artwork we're going through and just kind of tweaking everything. I'm going to drink it on the last day as a celebration. This is an awesome art book. Paul Bonner. Love this guy's art. So good. Check him out. Um, yeah, so that's uh, some of the different books in there. Just a jumble of different things. Wonder Woman and whatnot. Okay, let's go. Let's go up here now. So I uh, got these cool Ghostbusters based on the cartoon. Real Ghostbusters was one of my favorites as a kid. Still hoping I can hunt down some of the original, the original real Ghostbuster figures as well. You know, they just did a like a retro re-release of them, but I haven't been able to find them. Um, but these NECA ones are pretty cool. They're kind of like updated versions. And then over here, got another shelf of books. This is kind of my Batman section of graphic novels and collected editions. They used to be in order. They're just a jumble now because I've taken them out and looked at them. And, but these are the Jay Lee ones. And uh, these, are, these are great figures. Like this is the best, I think, mix of a uh, figure um, articulation with keeping the form. Like the way that this... The legs here like it keeps the form and the line of the character you know just it just looks really good and you could pose these characters but at the same time they just look great just standing I the, for most for the most part I keep most of my figures just in a cool standing pose it just looks really nice but these are this is a great series great set some of the best ones I think they've done I really love them and then these I got I got a bunch of the Capullo figures here that I've picked up over the years, mostly because I got to draw a lot of this stuff. Like one of the things about most of these figures that I've picked up is that I drew them at some point in time, a lot of the DC stuff at least. A lot of it's been put in the boxes though now as I've kind of cleaned up my room, but you know, you got Gordon and Joker, the Bat Mech, the uh, Year Zero Batman. It's a great figure. Just really nice stuff. I love Greg Capullo. He's always been a a good friend of me, and he's always been very encouraging of me and given me lots of career advice over the years. Um, he's a big, tough-looking dude, but he's really got a kind uh, heart on the inside, and I uh, love him. Uh, and so I had to get these figures. I just I love his artwork. He, he's, he's excellent. His stuff in Spawn was great, and his stuff on Batman was awesome. This figure here was, you know, if people remember, I did a Batman annual. It was one of my first works for DC after I kind of signed on to them. And I got to draw that version of the Mr. Freeze. That's a really cool figure. These, um, these Inker editions, that was like the one I was showing with, uh, with Brian Boland. These are great books. Like if you're, if you're an artist and you're looking at you're just you just want to look at the lines and and study how artists are building their characters with the lines and the inking uh, sometimes the colors can distract from some of that stuff because it adds an extra it adds that extra form to the characters uh, if you just want to see the inking pick up some of these the the batman noir uh hush one is really good the, the killing joke one is really really good too uh, those are excellent books uh for for learning learning art so let's do the top of my shelf here uh, before we move on down so I have some really cool books here these are th a lot of these up here are just boxes that from all the hot toy figures I don't really know where to store them so I just kind of put them up here but over time I've, I've put some other things up here that mean something to me so uh, let's start with let's actually start with this book here so this one here this book here was um, when I was a kid, I had this this issue of Batman, Batman 463, and uh, 
like it's just such a striking cover i always remembered it and who knows what happened to it got lost damage thrown out whatever um but the funny story about this is that i remember an episode of mr bean where he's in the dentist and he's looking at this issue and then uh I was like, yeah, that, that's that's the one I had when I was a kid. I totally remember that. And uh, I posted that on, on Twitter. And in a matter of minutes, uh, people were able to uh, tell me what the number is and actually help me track this, uh, track this book down. So uh, very cool. <laughs> I, I, actually, and, and somebody at a con brought me this. So I'm so thankful for that. They brought me this. It's in great condition. And uh, it's kind of a nice little... Uh, part of my collection um so then i also have this one this is x-men number six this was my dad's copy of x-men number six it's beat the heck the cover's falling off it's like a 0.1 grade right but but it's it's got a lot of meaning to me because it was my dad's and uh when we were, when I was a kid, I would read. I read through this book a bunch of times, and it was just really cool to to see a different era of X Men. You know, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. So and it's got Namor, and it uh, really cool, really cool story. Um, we got a Killing Joke, uh, second edition print. This one was given to me by Robin Cross from uh, Bat Force Radio. Check out Bat Force Radio. I've been a guest on there a bunch of times. So. Uh, but he gave me that book very very grateful this is one of my favorite swamp thing covers of all time i just love that tree swamp thing this looks so good so good and then we come to these figures so um my buddy trevor brought me these figures i i had been searching for them this batman here in particular not this exact one but i had this was this figure is what kind of led me into batman and uh, how the story goes is that for Christmas one year, my aunt got me the Batwing. This would have been like maybe 1990, 91, somewhere in there. She got me the Batwing, this giant Toy Biz Batwing. I remember that you could like pull a little trigger and like the, there would be clasps that would come out so you could grab your figures. And I hadn't, I didn't have any Batman figures and she thought I would have. So my mom went a couple days later to Toys R Us and got me this version of Batman and that was my first real kind of deep dive into Batman uh, I love that figure and uh, Trevor was able to hook me up with that and same with the gold Batman I remember going to a toy store at the Devonshire Mall in Windsor when I was a kid picking this one this figure out as a kid I still I still have the uh, the one I had as a kid it's up, it's up on my shelf but I uh, love the gold Batman always looked really cool you're like yeah must be super cool because he's wearing gold now right i had this uh, spider-man figure as a kid i found it recently um it has, has the suction cups so that it sticks and then uh trevor was able to hunt me down some of these other really cool joker figures the old bat uh, the, the the movie uh figure we got the uh the batman movie edition um, comics, really cool. Got Watchmen signed by Dave Gibbons. Uh, Wolverine Origin, uh, which my I when that book came out, I went to the store and I was I was trying to hunt down all the copies. I think I had issue two, three, four. I couldn't get issue one, and then my dad went to uh, I think it was Border City Comics in Windsor, a place where I've been going since forever. And he got me issue one uh, for Christmas one year, and so um, when I was a kid, and I saw so it, it's a special book to me. And then I got these two. I had I always I had this figure when I was a kid. Uh, the the suit changing Bruce Wayne, <laughs> and this one here too, really cool, kind of a classic version. So uh, yeah, th that's my that's sort of my upper shelf of just uh, action figures and stuff. And let's go to this shelf. So in here I got some Hellboy and some Swamp Thing, uh, some Marvel stuff, Spawn. Uh, recently been getting back into Spawn 
uh, after the Todd McFarlane Spawn Kickstarter, I, I went back and I've been buying some of the old graphic novels and uh, reading them and um, just listening to a lot of what Todd's been saying on podcasts. He's really an inspirational guy and I really dig uh, his thoughts and his outlook on the on comic books and and uh, how to be successful in the industry and uh, Spawn's a great character, really cool looking. I really, really like this figure. Uh, I picked it up a while ago. Um, simplicity of Sp of uh, his design of Spawn, um, and kind of how it's evolved over the years has been really neat to see. So after Batman, I would have to say my favorite comic book series is Hellboy by Mike Mignola. I've always loved everything that Mike has ever done uh, with the character. I've I've read most of the stories, if not every single one of them, and uh, he's a great storyteller. He's an amazing artist, and I would recommend Hellboy to almost anybody who just wants some really good, uh, classic feeling comics with uh, great art, interesting twist. I love the fol folklore aspect of it as well. Uh, so check it out. And uh, here's a. Uh, really sweet Hellboy action figure that I picked up a while back and uh, it's really it's it's posable it's got the cool jacket and the big hand and everything and just really well done and then uh, Swamp Thing got all the different Alan Moore Swamp Things and the classic Bernie Wrights and Swamp Thing stuff and New 52 really really nice stuff there uh, Swamp Thing's always been one of my favorite characters since I was a kid and watched that old uh, Swamp Thing cartoon show, I don't know if some of you guys remember that, uh, but uh, yeah, Swamp Thing's great. Collected a lot of the stuff and read read a lot of the Swamp Thing stuff too. Really, really enjoyed, the, especially the Alan Moore stuff. Really good stuff. If you're looking for something different, check out the Alan Moore uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, and then I got these samurai Marvel figures. Really cool mashup between the samurai armor and Marvel characters. Uh, that Iron Man is really neat. How they have the the old style gun and the armor. I love this company. I think they're called Tamashi Nations. They do really good, uh, really good stuff. And I'm looking forward to getting the Wolverine. That's pretty much the only other one I really want to get from this set is that Wolverine figure. And down here we got my Marvel set. This is like all the Marvel books I have. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> when you work for DC for years, you collect a lot of DC stuff. And I don't have much Marvel. Uh, a lot of the Ultimate X-Men stuff, that's what really got me in the comics in the early 2000s. That's where I discovered, uh, you know, uh, David Finch and Mark Millar and Andy Kubert and all these guys and Adam Kubert. And so <clears throat> I got some different Wolverines here. These are the ones I had as a kid. So then over here, I got a Star Wars poster, my dark side figure, some Lego stuff. Some cool stuff there got uh, this uh, Trinity statue that I helped design based off of a uh, cover I did. I forget which one. Uh, I did a cover that looked like that and it kind of turned it into a statue. Got my Neil Morse band album that I got signed by the whole band. It's kind of hard to see but it's all in silver marker. Um, these shelves are just full of art supplies. Uh, this is my old, this is the drawing desk, really. Like, I, when I'm, if I'm, I used to use this a lot more. I don't, I hardly ever use it now. This is mostly just used for my kids when they come down here and they'll, they'll, see, you can see how there's like crayons and stuff in there. Um, but uh, ever since I went to digital, I stopped doing a lot of traditional art. And when I do traditional art, I just draw it at my table over, I just use my screen my Cintiq as my table and I just draw there. Um, here's a, here are the three Jokers covers. This is the original covers here. Issue one and two. And then, yeah, there's issue three. You can see the, the pencil rough that I did. And I, I scanned it, I made some tweaks, and then I, that's the final 
ink to one there. So over here we have some more shelves. I don't know if I can get a bigger shot here. But like this is my, this is like behind my, this is behind my desk. So I have these floating shelves here. And so we'll go through some of this stuff. So um, some Ninja Turtles, these are original ones from the first, you know, release of Ninja Turtles back in whatever it was, the 90s, 80s, late 80s. Um, and uh, Inkwell, I, uh, Inkwell Award, some World of Warcraft stuff. I got some World of Warcraft figures up there that I had bought years ago. Uh, some Gretzky, uh, McFarlane Gretzky figures got when I was a kid. Um, a bunch of the, most of the books here are just like tossed. Like I don't really, like they're not in any particular order. They're just books that I, I have and I just kind of tossed around. Um, you know, Godzilla and stuff here. Some more toys on this shelf. And stuff here too. This toy was probably the first, uh, this was like the first DC collectible. At that time they were DC Direct, the Jim Lee Hush figure. <clears throat> really cool Batman though his his legs are like wonky like look at how weird that leg looks but but at the time I was like man this is like the coolest Batman figure ever the Superman is really good too cool Superman Darwin Cook Batman I love Darwin Cook got my Zel some Zelda stuff here kind of showing the progression throughout the different eras or of what uh, of Zelda uh, Link um, some of my favorite games, um, some Batman animated series figures. I got more of those coming up and some Dark Knight Returns stuff here. And then this shelf here, I have some cool little things. Um, so these are the figures that, uh, so like these are the ones I had as a kid, like the this one here, especially this was the gold Batman. I don't know where the blue one is. He's somewhere. I mean, my my son must have been playing with him. But uh, and then these are you know you got your three Jokers. The funny story about these figures was that a local shop called Paper Heroes was having a big sale. Um, a friend of mine was selling his massive collection of of figures, toys, all kinds of stuff. And I was rooting through a box of loose figures, and they, all three of these were actually in a package. I, I can't, I think it was even like labeled three jokers or, you know, something like that on the, on the little Ziploc bag. And so I, I just thought uh, that's uh, meant to be <laughs> um, this cool samurai Batman and Metal Gear Solid World of Warcraft stuff, some cards from the card game uh, signed Daryl Sittler. So let's look at this. So I have this little shelving unit here behind my desk. So my desk is here and then I have this little shelving unit. And so this like just hides a lot of unsightly stuff, books and art supplies and all that kind of stuff. So um, I kind of use it to display stuff and it usually it's just covered in books. I, I Like I said, I just cleaned my office the, the other day. So I've got this cool Star Wars model kit that I painted. I really like painting miniatures and that kind of stuff. It, it helps me cool down at the end of the day. So I painted this little Death Star that my wife bought for me at a con one, one year. Over here I have this David Finch art piece. It's a, a print of uh, one of his works that he did for Wizard Magazine. Uh, Dave, I can't say enough about Dave and Meredith Finch. It helped me so much in my career. Dave was the one uh, who took me... Uh, um, you know, in as a as an apprentice, and he started teaching me, and he kind of put me through a comic book boot camp for about six months, and uh, you know, he he taught me everything he knew, and then said, "Hey, let's see if we can send your stuff in and, and see if we can get you a job." And, uh, and he fought for me, and he helped me get that my first job at DC, and he even helped me draw a lot of the some of the first uh, works I ever did for DC Comics. He was uh, his art is actually uh, in, in a lot of it because he helped me get through some of those really tough deadlines. Um, but to this day, Dave's been a great friend and a mentor still. 
and uh, we've connected in a lot of other ways outside of comics and uh, he's his 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 generosity and his truthfulness about my work um, has, has really been uh, an encouragement over the years and then I got a Greg Capullo one here uh, print that he signed cool um, these are those Star Wars uh, samurai figures you know, they are really cool designs um, my only critique of these is I wish they would make more heroes they've only really done C-3PO I want like Luke and Han and Chewbacca and Leia and all those characters done in this style in a Japanese style uh, Metal Gear Solid Play Arts Kai figure. I need to get a figure stand because he will not stand up. Uh, Lee Weeks signed print. Lee's a good buddy of mine, and he's a, a, been a mentor to me. And uh, he's a he's just so good. And I uh, really love that Captain America. And then I got this print from Jim Lee. Signed it from there too. And then this here is a 3D printed uh, starship from the game Star Citizen. It's the, the ship is called the Drake Cutlass. And I 3D printed this. I, I took the in-game model. I then went in uh, Maya and I added all this extra detail and stuff to it. And then... Uh, you know, configured it so that like this thing actually moves and the guns move and stuff. And uh, I still have to print the little landing gear things on here, but um, and then I got I print three D printed this like this like landing pad. So here's the back of the ship, and I I ended up uh, engineering this little this flap here to actually like sit so it. It actually will fold up and in, but I'm scared of putting it in there because the, the the little uh, the hinge isn't very strong, so I just kind of leave it hanging there. But you know, it's actually got an interior where you can actually put stuff. It's really dark right now; you can't see. But printed off all these little cargo boxes and whatnot. So yeah, that was a pretty cool little thing, and just kind of discovering how to 3D print something it took tons of time. I had to sand this thing, and but. It, it looks pretty cool. Turned out pretty cool. It's about 90% done. I want to get some like plastic to put in here, like cut out like black kind of tr half, like a little bit transparent black plastic. Put it in there so it looks like uh, like a windshield. Got a couple, some more boxes. I got these. I had these uh, Ertl Batman '89 cars when I was a kid, and my. Uh, friend Trevor was able to find these for me uh, another uh, really cool gift and so uh, yeah they look awesome so then over here I have um, another Detolf on the side of my office and so this has got some more hot toy figures some of my more collectible kind of things so but we'll start here at the top so I have these Batman animated figures that I've collected. I, I like the the original animated series. Not I didn't wasn't really too hot on the new animated adventures or new Batman adventures. So I've been able to collect these over the years, going to cons and whatnot. I'm still missing Clayface and Scarecrow. So I have a, the full range, all the different characters, and then we have this uh, my. Detolfs here. Um, again, I put the lights in them. So we got. Uh, yeah, let me just see if I can get a little more light in here. So I got, you know, Batman. This was the first hot toy figure I got uh, from Mike at Mike's Comics in Orlando. Go check him out. He's got all kinds of cool stuff. And he he ended up helping me find a lot of these figures, sending them to me. I'm grateful for him. Um, but the Batman and Robin, really cool. And then Batman '89. I got the Mondo uh, soundtrack behind it. it. Just looks really cool. Cool artwork to have kind of behind it. Love those two figures. 
think I think the '89 one is my favorite of all the Batman figures that Hot Toys done. Um, there's the Dark Knight Rises and the Batman Returns with the Mondo uh, record behind it. And I got the uh, Batman v Superman figures here with Batman and Armored Batman. Then I got these here. This is my little He-Man Masters of the Universe set. So I got He-Man. I got a reissue of He-Man there. But uh, He-Man with the box behind him and then Skeletor. These are great figures by Mondo. I had these on my desk up until yesterday, and then I decided I'd finally put them behind the glass, so. But down here, I got some Metal Gear Solid figures. And then uh, here, I have these. Uh, so first, this is Swamp Thing. I can't remember if it's a DC Direct or if it was like a Mattel Direct. It was something different. But uh, that's a cool Swamp Thing. He's all like spongy. And uh, I love it because it's like the Bernie Wrights in Swamp Thing. And then behind it is a copy of Swamp Thing number one signed by Bernie Wrightson, uh, which I got from my friend Jeremy. Um, he hooked me up with that. Uh, very cool. Something that I really cherish in my collection. And then these are, I found out later, these are like knockoffs. <laughs> Knockoff NECA Ninja Turtles. Um, I wondered why I got them so cheap at a con, <laughs> but uh, they're great figures. Like they, they work, they pose perfectly. I've never had any problems with them. The paint jobs are excellent. Uh, love, I love that original run of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Laird and Eastman. And then I have, like behind it, you can see I have a sketch cover by Kevin Eastman of my favorite turtle, Leonardo. Uh, so I really cherish that as well. Uh, as you can see, I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan. Um, so yeah, so that's that's all the stuff that's here in my office. Uh, again, kind of a wide shot of everything here. Um, I got, these shelves are filled with comic books, loose comics, box comics, all that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, things things often move around and evolve as time goes by. I get rid of things. I replace it with other things. Um, but I wanted to create a really cool office and atmosphere that keeps you sort of always inspired. You know, this is usually like the view from my desk. You know, as I look up, you know, I have the Ghostbusters and all this really cool stuff. And I, I usually will, I'll have the lights on these shelves while I work. Yeah, so that's that's my office. Thank for, thanks for uh, checking this out. I'm gonna show you one more thing, uh, a couple more things right after this. So here is one more thing. This doesn't fit in my office. I used to have it behind my desk. But this is by Hot Toys, uh, Marty McFly, uh, Back to the Future, DeLorean. Um, lights up, it looks really cool. Love this car. With the Marty. And then all of this little stuff, I actually made myself. Uh, the figure came with the book, the almanac there and the paper, but I ended up printing up like the note the little comic book, The Tales from Space. I can't really get in there to show it off too well, but The Tales from Space. And then if you look through the window here, the newspaper, the picture of the flux capacitor, the, the fantastic stories issue. Uh, yeah, so I kind of printed that off and put that in there really cool uh, just to kind of heighten it. And then I got this cool Mondo uh, Back to the Future print here um poster so that kind of goes with it you know as a nice little display piece we're over here on uh, uh outside of my office this is actually kind of in our little den uh, tv den or whatever but i have all of the uh, dc essential figures that i designed uh, going all the way across really cool um i think this is most of them that i designed i mean I, there might be a few more 
Uh, I, actually, I know there's a few more I have in boxes down there. I haven't even taken them out yet, but uh, yeah, so I got those. And then down here, I have my uh, Swamp Thing and the Eisner that we won for uh, Talk of the Saints. Uh, black and white Batman statue that I got to design in the, the, the mini version of it. It's kind of, kind of funky. Got some more black and whites, the Mike Mignola and the David Finch one, and then the coins that I got to design. I designed uh, for the Canadian Mint. Uh, very cool. Really neat stuff here. Just bookshelves full of stuff that I've done. And then uh, I got this over here with the Frank Miller and the Pat Gleason Batman statue and the, uh, the, the coin. So this coin here was actually a piece of artwork that I did for my son for his room. It was a poster and uh, they, the Canadian men asked if they could put it on a coin. Very cool. Really neat stuff. So unique opportunities, you know, you'll, you get some unique opportunities in this industry. And, uh, you know, who would have ever known I would have gotten to do some of the cool things I've, I've gotten to do. So very neat. So that was a look at my office and everything that I have in here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little video and uh, thanks for watching.